a good afternoon to everyone who has joined us for this um, session, uh, which is basically going to cover about the Greuters um, EBA programs and the support that you can expect uh, to come from us once you are on um, the EBA models for the Greuter. So there's a few um, housekeeping that um, I'm going to quickly mention. Um, you would have seen that your audio and video is being turned off during this session. So if you have any questions during or after the presentations, type it into the chat box and uh, make sure to change the setting so that the question is visible to everyone and we will address to it after the presentations. Um, this whole session is being uh, recorded. Uh, the videos and slides uh, will be circulated to all registrants after the event. So if you have any questions not answered during the webinars, please um, email me. Um, and we will also um, include the emails of all the speakers in the uh, post-event um, email. Um, so I'm going to um, just pass on to Jonas from Megatex to do a self-introduction. Um, Jonas, please. Thank you, Lervinia. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I am Jonas Lucena, and I am the Client and Partner Relations Manager for Megatex Philippines Incorporated. With me is my colleague, Mr. Rex Molina. He's our technical support. And we are based in our Makati office. And on behalf of our company president, Ms. Jean Chu Lim, we would like to thank you all for joining us uh, this afternoon. So a brief introduction to our company, Megatex Philippines. So over the last uh, 25 years, Megatex has been making world-class education, research, and library solutions accessible to Philippine libraries and institutions. Now, these solutions include print, digital, as well as library systems and technologies. We have our offices in Makati, Cebu, and Davao to cover and support our clients across the Philippines. So we partner with globally renowned and reputable content and solutions providers to bring you top quality products and services. One of our key partners, the Greuter. So the Germans have been known for their uncompromising quality, precision, and reliability. So the Greuter offers a growing collection of over 100,000 ebooks, which includes content from other publishers as well as top universities, uh, presses, um, the Ivy League. Uh, universities like Harvard, Yale, and Princeton, to name a few. So interestingly, for the Philippine market, the Greuter has a Philippine collection, which would be very relevant for our local libraries who are trying to build up on their Filipiniana collection. So with that, I would like to turn you over to our presenter for today, Peng. Thank you. Thank you, Jonas. Yeah, okay. First, let me share my screen. Okay, just to double check if it, if you can see my screen slides. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. And thank you, Jonas, for the uh, great opening because I I think you took some of my lines in the slides, <laughs> but that was great. That was great. And uh, a great thank you for everyone who is attending this afternoon session. It's our uh, webinar for Philippines, and uh, today the topic primarily lies on evidence-based acquisition with the Greater, aka EBA, is one of the ebook purchase models. So before I start everything, uh, here is a gentle reminder. Um, please post your questions either in the chat box or at the end of the webinar by raising your hands. So we will have a lucky draw among all the people who have done so, and we will give you a 1,000 peso coupon from Giveaway platform. Okay, so ask us anything about evidence-based acquisition along the way. Okay, first, a very quick recap of who we are, who De Guiter is. So De Guiter is an independent scholarly publisher since 1749, a long time ago. And we publish books, journals, databases, and other scholarly content. We have over 360, uh, 350 employees worldwide, and we have offices in almost all continents with the headquarter in Berlin, Germany. So each year we have about more than 4,000 new titles, books and ebooks. We have more than 4,000 new titles. 
And overall, we have 420 journals, and this includes subscription journals and OA journals. And also overall, we have 70 online references and databases. And for publishing areas, we cover subjects from A to Z. So that's humanities and social sciences, as well as, as, well as science, technology, and medicine. So in order to extend our coverage in content and in subject, we also partner with third-party partners. So this includes all the prestige university presses like the ones from Ivy League, Cornell, Princeton, Columbia, Pennsylvania, Yale, and Harvard. And now we come to the point of this webinar. It's evidence-based acquisition. So it's one of the new, newest ebook purchase models. As the name suggests, it's for library to acquire content based on solid evidence. So this evidence is primarily usage. So how does it work? So how does the EBU work? First, the library is like a package, whether it's English-only package or a complete package, up to 120,000 titles. The next stage, we will turn on the access for all these titles for you to access for 12 months. So during the 12 months, you get unlimited access, no DRM, and along the way, we can provide monthly counter user reports and mark record and other metadata at your request. Final stage, at the end of the full 12 months period, we will provide you again with an enhanced user report for you to make a decision to decide which titles to buy. And these titles is to keep in perpetual access to the value of your EBA fee. But don't worry, we are not gonna hurry you in this process. We will give you 90 days, that is three full months after the 12 months. So you will have the time to think and make the decision what titles to purchase to keep. So here are the, uh, some of the EBA benefits, DRM-free, unlimited user access, available in both formats, PDF and EPUB, and no ongoing fees. So even after these two slides tell you what the EBA is roughly, you might still have questions. Is EBA an effective way to build my library collection based on the usage data? What is the advantage of EBA for my for a library? And will EBA help the library and faculty members be in control of making the decisions? And is EBA a one-time purchase model? Well, you might already have some answers to these questions if you have already you know, been familiar with EBA. Or if you're not, I hope the following slides will help you get clear of some of the questions posted here. And there's no better one to tell the story than a real librarians who are familiar with the EBA and who have done it. So the following several slides were taken directly from a real librarian's presentation regarding their EBA experience and why they decided to choose EBA for their own models. And it all starts with some difficult situations. Increasing needs for e-resources, of course, and shrinking budgets, of course, of course. I'm pretty sure that many of you are familiar with this kind of difficult situation, shrinking budgets. And this leads to um, an effective budget allocation. So where should the library place their budget at with it and how they're going to purchase all this content if the budget is decreasing and the prices of this content are increasing? Last but not least, the print book loan rate is very low. Yes, I think nowadays you can fairly say that very few people want to read print books. So what are the available ebook purchase methods to this librarian? Of course, the traditional methods like bulk purchase or pick and choose with some discount, of course. And the second one would be demand driven and that includes a uh, slightly old type of demand driven, which is PDA and DDA, and also the newest one, the EBA, evidence-based acquisition. All of these methods will lead to a final purchase. But which one to choose? 
So after all the evaluation done by this university library, they found that EBA has its own, uh, has its own advantages. And one thing is to improve the user ex experience. Because now, unlike the traditional way of purchase, that user can only access to the title that they purchase. So they might, so they can't satisfy, the library cannot satisfy all the needs by purchasing everything. But with EBA, we open up access to almost all of our titles to the users. So when the user is experienced the title access our platform, they can read everything. So that's a very big win for the library. And second is the effective budget allocation because based on the comprehensive user reports at the end, they know where their budget will go and they know the title they select will be the quantity titles that will be used by the users for the days to come. And that is the quality of collection development. And last but not least, their purchase will be much more approved by their senior management than comparing to the traditional way of purchase ebooks. So after all these evaluations, the library decided that the EBA had more pros than cons. And to summarize, they say, quote unquote, the EBA model is a new purchase model that take into consideration of both patrons' needs and librarians' professional capabilities. Not only can it achieve the purpose of expanding access to resources, but also build perpetual collections effectively in the end. Meanwhile, it can also balance the commercial interest between libraries and publishers and enable a healthy development of library collections. This is from their librarians. Okay, so what are indeed included in the Goethe's ebook package that made it probably more attractive than the other publishers? Of course, on the left, we have our own titles, but also as mentioned in the earlier slides, we have the participating publisher partners. We call it publisher partner program. And in this program, we featured the university presses like the ones from Ivy League. And for sure, each year we will have new partners joining in on our platforms. And the, as mentioned earlier, the publisher partner program, including the university presses, what are the statistics of them in, in our EBA packages? So currently we have nearly 30 partners, among which 18 university press partners, including the American ones. And we have more than 70,000 publisher partner titles and it's growing. And on top of that, there are much more of the Deguiter's own titles. So it's a very big EBA package pool. And you might, you know, uh, some of you, and even me, when I first, you know, uh, know the fact, I, I would ask, so how about all these university press content on other platforms? And yes, these university press content do exist in other platforms, but as you can see from the graphs, the green one represents our share. So we have, so of all these university presses, the Guiters have more content from all these university presses than any other platforms. So we own the most. And then we come to the exclusivity of these partner partner titles. So we have more than 9,000 titles from six university partners and they are exclusive titles on us. So you won't see these titles from any other platforms. And this includes Columbia University Press, Stanford, Harvard, California, and et cetera. And also we have exclusive partners of the left of the right two. So these two ASP and GP, all of their content are exclusive with us and is featured in our EBA packages. Again, we see the similar graph. Again, the green represents the goiter. So as you, as you can see that of all these university presses, we have exclusivity of some kind, but for the, for the main ones like Columbia, Harvard, California, Chicago, we, you know, there was more than half of their content are exclusive on our platforms. So that's very important because you won't, see any of these have on other platforms. 
Okay, enough with the uh, uh, <laughs> the uh, data and stuff. And we are, we are gonna see some case studies, the real world case studies that will help you understand why EVA is better comparing to the other methods. So here are the two large universities in APAC. I think we can say it's in Australia. So there's two large universities. And just pay attention to the green highlighted figures. In 2020, both of these universities joined the uh, access the EBA. And on that year, each of them have accessed to 5,000, more than 5,000 titles during that year. So they access, they download, they print, and the total list value is more than 600 euros. And I mean, in a, in a traditional way of purchase, they have to pay this much in order to access these many titles. But of course they can't pay this much because it's too expensive. So for EBA, they only pay a fraction of that as an EBA fee and to access all of our titles. And this concludes that for the cost per download, it's merely between 0 0.5 euros to 2.45 euros per download while you join the EBA program. So that's very low. And here, the low is the better because you spend less and you access more. And also comparing with the traditional way of purchase, for the same amount of budget with the EBA model, patrons get to access eight to 18 times more titles. And here's a quick look, or here's a quick comparison chart between evidence-based acquisition, EBA, and its predecessor, the demand-driven acquisition, the, you know, the DDA. So with the EBA, of course, the library, you know, the librarians select the titles based on the comprehensive user reports. But with DDA, it's the patron's click. You know, how many clicks were counted as one download? This is just no control. And this leads to the budget management situation. So for EBA, librarians decide what titles and what subject to choose to spend their budget on. But for DDA, it's a patron download that will take all the money from the deposit. So EBA clearly wins in this chart. Again, let's look at some universities in Asia, in our own zones. So this is one university in Asia and they access for six months. So their total titles access is nearly 14,000 titles. And the least value of that is nearly 2 million euros. So they access 2 million euro worth of titles. Of course, they can't pay that much in the traditional way of purchase. So with EBA, with a fraction of that as an EBA fee, their cost per download is merely less than 0 0.5 euros per download. That, that is very good. And let's look at another medium universities in Asia. So they access the EBA for 12 months and total number of titles accessed is nearly, well, it's more than 1,600 titles. And then the total lease price is 244,000 euros. Again, they can't pay this much, but with the EBA only paying a fraction of that amount, they can, their cost per download is less than 1.6 euro per download. So that's very good. And that's why they decide to renew. Okay, so again, let's look at the, uh, the question that we posted early on. Is EBA an effective way to build my library collection based on usage data? What is the advantage of EBA for a library? Will EBA help the library affect the members being in control of making the decision? I mean, personally, I think it's yes to all of these questions, but I'm pretty sure all of you have some kind of understanding as to what EBA can do for your library. But here comes the, uh, the last question that remains unanswered. Is EBA a one-time purchase model? And here, I want you all to get active now please type your answer, yes or no, in the chat box as to how you think EBA model is. So in your opinion, is EBA evidence-based acquisition a one-time purchase model, or it is kind of like a subscription model that will go on year after year? Please type your answer in the chat box. I'll give you 10 seconds. Okay, it's counting. Is EBA a one-time purchase model? So 
So the answer is yes or no. Okay. See the number is rising. Yeah. Okay, time's up. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be very cheeky here because the answer is yes and no. <laughs> so yes, it is a one-time purchase model because as mentioned earlier, at the end of 12 months, you get to choose the titles to be keep for your own good, to, to be perpetual access. So that is for you to keep. But then it is not a one-time purchase model because in the real world cases, Many universities see the benefit of EBA in the first year because their budget's in control. They spend the money on the titles that their users really want to use. They see the benefit of that. And then they, re and then they renew it the next year and then the year after that and continuously. So in the real world case, it is more like a subscription model because they see the benefit of that. Okay, here's a wrap up of the benefits of the EBA or the eBooks at large. Front list titles are included. So the new titles are all included in the EBA package. Unlimited rights for all titles. And it's no DRM, no limit on users access and no limit on the print on all the things. And the, the perpetual rights are for the titles that you select at the end of the 12 months and available in two formats, PDF and EPUB. And, we, and then we provide, of course, the MARK, KBART, and also comprehensive user reports. And we have a dedicated custom service for that. Okay, so that will be all of my presentation. And I hope you have some understanding of the EBA and what EBA can do to your library. And uh, here is a final, re uh, final reminder. Please type your questions in the chat box or raise them at the end of the webinar and we will have a lucky draw among all of you and to give away 1,000 peso coupon for winners. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pong. And now we will move on um, to the next um, section, which is about the um, service and support for the EBA customers. So let me just quickly share my screen. So let me know if you're looking at my presentation mode. Yes. Okay, yes. great. All right. Um, so what happens after you decide you know, to be part of Droid's EBA program? So over here, we strongly believe that even though the sales is done, interactions with the librarian still needs to continue. And this includes you know, onboarding services, extended support, and proactive outreach with you guys to identify small roadblocks before they become a big issues so that the whole EBA experience is an enjoyable one for your users and you. Um, so if you are looking at, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, you have limited time, you do not have the manpower or the budget, you know, to create materials to promote these new resources, these EBA programs that you have joined or you might not have the knowledge or enough information to do content marketing, or maybe perhaps you have pushed out materials to inform your students, but they are not actively using it. They'd rather be using Google search engine. And lastly, um, how do you get qualitative feedback from your users? How do they actually feel about, you know, Deep Reuters content, about other university presses content? And lastly, um, how can you optimize the reports at the end of the program and other statistics to do a quantitative judgment whether you know is it really value for money. So now let's look at you know the support resources that you should be asking from us or any other publishers once you have purchased uh, EBA to program with them or you know ebook packages. It doesn't have to be EBA program. So over here at the Greuter, we will be with you at the start. We will have an onboarding session. It can be an online or offline, depending on where we have our sales presence. And it's, it can also be held at a time that's convenient to your whole team, which not just includes um, the acquisition team, but also you know, technical, the cataloging, the subject librarians, anyone that should be aware of this program that you guys are on board now. So in this session, 
your whole team will get to know a lot more about the whole program itself, the key highlights, the strengths, and the partners that is being involved. And this will be useful to your subject librarians and faculties so that they will know that who will benefit the most from the resources available. There will also be a walkthrough on key systems where librarians can self-help to extract reports, title lists, um, updating of IP addresses if required. All EVA customers will also get regular updates on the program content through our marketing systems on a regular basis. And you can also request for automated you know, media reports or ad hoc as you deem necessary to judge whether you know, is it working for your institution so far. And last but not least, you will get to know the whole support team at Decorator, which will involve the marketing, the customer service, the metadata, and the sales support that you will be liaising with throughout the journey. Next is um, end user communications. So work with us um, to create a unified message for your library users. So make sure that they know what they're entitled to. You know, what they can access to, you know, uh, what are the benefits to them if they start using it. And over here, we can help you to craft that message and make it available in different formats that you might require um, through the different channels that you have. Maybe it can be your campus newsletters or your internal emailing systems. Or you can simply repurpose the content that we send to you and broadcast it as it is through your internal channels. Lastly, is an important area, which is helping you to engage with um, the users. So again, this can be physical, it can be on campus, or it can be an online event, depending on the content we're talking about. So we have worked with a lot of institutions in the past to host workshops, which allows your users to get familiar with, you know, the Degreuters platform, the publishing program. And we also share tips and tricks to how to search for content more effectively. We run quizzes and interactive activities, which is always welcomed by the students because they get to engage with the resources in a fun manner and they get rewarded at the same time. So through all these sessions, we always make it a point to encourage feedback from the end users so that we can report this back to you for further qualitative assessments. So that's the end of my presentation. And I'm going to leave this slide just for a minute or two to let you absorb about you know, what our librarians and our users are talking about, you know, the services that we provide them. And I hope to work with all, if not some of you in the near future. And for any questions regarding marketing support, feel free um, to drop me a line at my email. And of course, this slides and post slides will be circulated in the post event email. So now we're going to uh, proceed on to the Q&A. And uh, we're going to give about two minutes for you to you know, type your questions into the chat box. And I'm going to end the slideshow right now. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, all right. So give about a couple of minutes for you to think about the questions that you might have about our program or the support that, you know, um, you might be curious about. If there is um, no question at the moment, you can always you know, feel free to email us after that or contact our local sales rep, Megatex, uh, to discuss about your EBA needs. Yeah, I will just uh, share the last slide. Okay. These are the contact information and all of our social media account. Hey, it seems like maybe our presentation is quite clear cut. Everybody has a good understanding about our program. Oh, so we have a question. So, um, so I'm going to read out the question. Um, what happens to the perpetual collections when the library stops to subscribe to the EBA package? Shall we say yes, for a yes. year or a few years? Can we still access the collections through the platform? Is it free or with a hosting fee? Okay, so I think that's a very easy question. And it's a very good question as well. 
Um, yes, it is free for many years to come because whatever you select in the end is for you to keep. And then if, well, we would love you to be with our platform for years to come. But if you decided that you only want to do one year EBA, it's totally fine. At the end of the year, how many titles you, you select is for you to keep perpetually. So the next year, you don't need to pay a hosting fee and you can still access all these titles that you selected at the end. And for many years, it's because of the perpetual rights. And just want to clarify with one thing. Uh, if you decided not to, if you, if you decided not to do the EBA for the second year, you can only access the titles that you choose for your perpetual rights to access. But then for the whole package, for the whole platform, then you don't have access to that. But you can access to the perpetual titles that you choose at the end of the last EBA. No problem. Right, we'll just give it a minute in case anyone is typing. If not, we can conclude this session in a bit. There is a question coming through. Um, I'm not sure how to interpret that. Um, Peng, do you need uh, further explanation yeah, for that question? So would be available for platform. So what would be available for uh, what platforms? Could you maybe uh, clarify this a little bit? Sir Emmanuel, um, what do you mean by platforms um, oh. on the question? Okay, so from my presentation, when I say platform, I mean the other aggregators. So, oh, okay, so I can just go back. Can you see my cursor? See, this is available at the Twitter, JSTOR, Muse, and Upsol. So welcome, but because the university press content, some of the university press content are also available on other platforms such as aggregators. But here, just comparisons to show that we have more content from these university presses on other platforms, the green ones shows. Yeah. So to answer your question, the other platforms here, I'm referring to the aggregators. Because this is the question we got asked a lot, that if these university presses are also available on other aggregators, and the answer is yes, but we have more, and also we have exclusivity of some of the content from the university presses. Uh, here's an, uh, also a question from accessible online and offline. I, I, so I assume that you're talking about the ebooks, right? So once, so if, if you subscribe, if you are in the EBA program, you can access the ebooks online because it's on our platform, but you can download it, PDF or EPUB. And then so once it's downloaded, then you can read them offline. There's no extra app or software needed to read them, you can just download it and it's in the PDF format. So you can read it on any devices, offline or online. I hope that's answered. Okay, thanks.
Okay, any more questions? Any questions are welcome here. Yes, correct. Thank you, Rex. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to read out Rex's message because it's being sent to the panelists. So um, Rex was just um, highlighting the fact that you can read the writer's ebooks in within the browser or on your preferred um, ebook reader. Okay, I don't think we have any questions from the floor. So I'm going to just do a wrap up and you know, thank you everyone for sparing your time to attend the afternoon session. Uh, we really encourage you to you know, throw us more questions after the event. Uh, feel free to contact Peng or Megatext with regards um, to your EBA needs. And thank you once again uh, for the time and then have the rest of the afternoon enjoyable. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mom Dea, Mom Fredsi. Thank Mom you, Sir Have a good week. Thank you.